Today, we're going to attempt a real marriage of the past and the future. Is it possible to use the world's most powerful consumer artificial intelligence, ChatGPT, on a Commodore 64 computer from 1982? And as a bonus, we'll also try it on the Amiga. And today's video is brought to you with our good friends at PCBWay. Now they offer fully featured custom PCB prototyping with low cost, fast turnaround quality boards. And they offer services like 3D printing and injection molding. And you know that PCBWay are massive supporters of the retro community. So if you're working on a project right now, you can get an instant quote on their website at PCBWay.com. Now, if you follow current technology trends, you can't ignore artificial intelligence. AI is the biggest trend in tech right now. It's been baked into search engines, chatbots. There's even a PR AI assistant called Amiga, although probably not running on an Amiga 500. But AI is inescapable right now, and it's showing no signs of slowing down. Microsoft is bringing it to Windows and Office with their Copilot project, and Google declared their first ever code red emergency recently, seeing the first real threat to the company's future with a big refocus on AI with their BARD service. AI is big business in 2023. And currently the most popular service is OpenAI's ChatGPT. Now this large language model AI is currently available in the free version 3.5, which is open to the public, and a subscription model for the more advanced version 4, which I've got to admit I do find incredibly useful. Now I use ChatGPT4 regularly in my day job, and it does save me a lot of time each week doing, you know, the more mundane tasks like email newsletters and helping with research. It can even write YouTube scripts, although, I've got to admit they are quite robotic at the moment and formulaic, but they are improving all the time. And ChatGPT is definitely a very useful tool for getting projects started and giving creators inspiration. But how can we use this cutting edge AI on an old school Commodore 64, a machine that is now 41 years old? Well, obviously the first thing I thought I'd try is, let's ask ChatGPT itself. Is there any way to access this from a Commodore 64? And it does tell me that although it would be difficult, it should be possible. And it even offered some hardware and software solutions on how we can do this. Now, luckily, I was already ahead of the game here and we've already got everything we need to give this a try. And it turns out that someone else has already done a lot of the hard work for me and you can use it as well. So first of all, let's have a look at the hardware we're gonna be using to do this. Now, the Commodore 64 was the most popular home computer of the 1980s, selling anywhere from an estimated 12.5 million units up to 32 million units on the high-end estimate. And actually, until fairly recently, it was considered to be the best-selling single-model home computer of all time, until the Raspberry Pi took that title just a few years ago. And specs-wise, as the name would suggest, it's got 64 kilobytes of RAM. It is powered by an MOS Technologies 6510 CPU, running at around one megahertz. And the most common storage options for the machine back in the day were either cassette tapes, which you know most of the games that we've got here in the UK came on, or 5.25 inch floppies. Although today, there are a multitude of SD card readers available to make life a bit easier. But of course, the big thing is that we'll need to be connected to the internet to access ChatGPT. Now, back in the day, you'd normally get online using a modem connected to a standard telephone line to call your local BBS using something like this, which it would be very cool to use, although unfortunately, I haven't got a landline anymore. And even if I did, I'm not sure this would work over modern digital lines. But luckily, I've had this great little device in my possession for almost a decade now. Now, this is the 64NIC Plus. And in fact, I did a full video about this on the channel when I got it back in 2014. So if you want to check out that video, me dialing up some bulletin boards using it, I'll put a link in the video description. But now, almost a decade later, it is still going strong and I still use this card regularly. It plugs into the cartridge slot on the Commodore 64 and gives us a very nice self-contained network interface. So it gives a C64 an Ethernet socket and allows me to hook it up to my home network. Now, there are more modern solutions available that let you use Wi-Fi, but this one is still serving me just fine, so I felt no need to really change it. So with the 64 NIC Plus attached, we can now connect the Commodore 64 to the internet. But how on earth are we gonna use ChatGPT? Well, luckily, I've got everything we need to do that 
on this floppy disk. So let's get started. Okay then, so the first thing we need to do on the Commodore 64 is to configure the network interface card. And we do that by running a program from the disk called SetMac. Now this will get an IP and MAC address from my local area network and allow us to connect the Commodore 64 to the internet. And as you can see, the ethernet controller has been found. We've got the MAC address, so we should be good to go. Now the next thing we need to do, of course, is to load up some terminal software so we can connect to the BBS. And I've got my favorite one on this disc called Kipper Term, and I've used uh, Kipper Term for many years now, really fully featured, and also lets us display those beautiful Commodore Petsky graphics as well. So the BBS should look really nice when we get connected. And a few seconds later, that's loaded, we run it, and then we hit F1 to get into Telnet, and we can enter the BBS address. Now for this demo, we're gonna be using a bulletin board called Retro Campus. Now this is a brilliant BBS based in Italy and operated by Francesco Splendorio. And this has been running since 2018. And if you support this BBS on Patreon like I do, it opens up a load of extra features, including accessing ChatGPT. And as you can see from the menu, there's a lot that you can do on this BBS. And I thought just quickly we'd run through a few of the highlights on here. As you can see at the top here, they offer daily news headlines in both Italian and English. So if we press number two, we can then go into the uh, new services. There's a load in here, for example, the BBC. We can check out the top stories today on the 10th of July, the day that I'm recording this video. And as you can see, it's scraping in all the headlines directly from the BBC's website and reformatting them into a format that's suitable to look at on a Commodore 64. And we can change to the world news and hit spacebar to go through the headlines on here as well. So that's very cool. We can go back and change the provider, check out CNN. We can check out today's world news from here. Even got the CNN logo in the corner there as well. So I do think it is very cool to get, you know, today's headlines downloaded directly to your Commodore 64. And there's a load of different providers on here as well. Something else that's always popular on a BBS is of course the games category. And uh, this board is actually furnished with some really good games. A few simplistic ones like Connect 4 and Magic 15 and, uh, tic-tac-toe or noughts and crosses as we call this game here in the uk and you can play it directly from the bbs and if you want something a little bit more in depth the legendary infocom games are on here zork one two and three and hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy of course classic text adventures and uh, you can check out the bbs version directly from the retro campus BBS, including all of the uh, frustrating commands that you've got to remember and type in exactly. Uh, I must admit, it's been quite a few years since I played this game, uh, but definitely you can get sucked into these adventure games and uh, make sure you save your game regularly as well, because I remember it is quite easy to die in these games. And you can even browse the internet directly from your Commodore 64 via this BBS, admittedly very simplistically in text-only format, but you know you can check out websites from your C64, it is possible. And we've got chat and messaging facilities. Uh, one of my favorite bits of this BBS is the Commodore 64 graphics gallery section. And as you can see, we've got some really cool graphics that you can browse through from the BBS in a Commodore Petsky format. So these look really nice on the Commodore 64 display. And before we hop into ChatGPT, I thought this was quite interesting. They call this the world's first chatbot ever. And this is from 1966. Now this is an early AI called Eliza. And this simulates conversations and learns from you as you go along. Now, obviously, it's nowhere near as impressive as ChatGPT, but it is interesting to see one of the earliest examples of a natural language processor. But of course, the main reason we are here on this video is to check out ChatGPT. Now, I did mention this is only available to patrons of the board, so I'll link up the Patreon link in the video description if you want to join. It's only about £3 a month if you want to support this. And then it asks you to enter your email address that you've registered with, and then you're automatically emailed an access code to get into the ChatGPT area of the Retro Campus BBS. Okay, and here we are at the ChatGPT prompt on my Commodore 64, so... Uh, this is very cool. And um, as you can see, we've got the logo there in Petsky Graphics and we've got the uh, the U prompt. So I guess that means we can just type in something to send to ChatGPT. So we'll try saying hello. And then it will uh, yeah, send that to the server. There we go. Hello, how can I assist you today? So we'll ask it to um, tell me about the Commodore 64. 
Now, I think it actually took a lot of the information it knows from the web pre-2021. I think that's the cut-off date. As you can see there, the Commodore 64 is known as a T64. And it talks about the graphics and sound, the legacy. And when the text reaches the end of the page, you hit space to move it on. And yeah, that all looks pretty accurate. So you can do factual stuff fine. One thing about ChatGPT is it can do creative things as well. So let's ask it to write a poem about the Commodore 64 and see how it gets on with this. In the land of tech, a legend once held sway, a computer that forever in our memories will stay. Its name, Commodore 64, a true delight with its magic and power, it filled our nights. Very nice. <laughs> and that's one cool thing about ChatGPT. If you ask it to do that again, it will come up with a completely different poem. So it is, it's generating these on the fly. So it is quite good at this kind of thing. Actually, let's try and get it to be a little bit more creative than a poem. What about asking it to write me a story about the Commodore 64 um, and, and kind of see how relatable this is to those of us who had these machines back in the day. And the speed of this is pretty decent, actually. Not much different to doing it on the ChatGPT website. Here we go. Once upon a time in a small town, there lived a young boy named Michael. He was captivated by the world of technology, always yearning to explore and learn more. One day, his father surprised him with a, a gifter gift of, I think that's meant to mean, Commodore 64, the marvel of its time. Excitement surged through Michael as he unboxed the computer. He couldn't wait to dive into its capabilities. With eager hands, he connected the C64 to his television and powered it on. The familiar blue screen greeted him, inviting him into a realm of endless possibilities. And that kind of does ring true as to my experience when I got my uh, Commodore Plus 4 back in the day. So... Yeah, the creative stuff of ChatGPT is pretty cool. One thing it can do as well, um, and I've read mixed reports of how well it can do this, but it can do programming too. So it would be quite interesting to see if it can write something specifically for the Commodore 64. So let's try a simple Pong clone for the Commodore 64 using um, Commodore Basic version 2, which is the version that is supplied by default with the Commodore 64. Let's see how it gets on. Now, I must admit, I've got no way of actually testing this out and getting this from ChatGPT at the moment into the basic interpreter of the 64, but we can have a look at the, the code. I must admit, I'm not the best programmer in the world, and uh, I'm sure there will be people who are watching who can tell me if this would work. So here we go. A simple Pong clone created for Commodore Basic V2 for the Commodore 64. It's even got remarks in there as well to tell you what it's doing. Looks like it prints C64 Pong at the top there. We have some uh, for and next instructions here. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you'd have to test this out. You could probably do it in emulation pretty easy, actually. Just copy and paste it from something like Vice. So um, maybe someone wants to give that a try from ChatGPT and see if that actually runs. It would be quite interesting to see. See, so, yeah, I do think, you know, for now, it does feel a bit of a novelty being able to do this from the Commodore 64, admittedly. But it is very cool to use, you know, what is the hottest tech right now <laughs> on a 40 year old computer i wonder what it thinks of the fact that i'm accessing this from a 64 is it going to blow its mind there you go that's fantastic it's great to hear that you're using a commodore 64 to access me it remains an iconic and beloved computer very nice and it offers to give me some uh, assistance with anything related to the commodore 64. what about this let's see what it thinks is uh, the best machine the spectrum or the c64 which side of the fence is it going to fall on The question whether the ZX Spectrum of the Commodore 64 is better is subjective and depends on personal preference. Ah, oh, it wimped out on answering that. Sitting on the fence. <laughs> so yeah, very, very cool to uh, see this running on the Commodore 64. We'll do uh, one final thing here. Kind of the uh, the YouTube equivalent of saying hello, mom. Say hello to my YouTube viewers. There you go. Hello to all the YouTube viewers. It's a pleasure to have you here. So that is ChatGPT running on a Commodore 64. Now I did say it's not the only machine that we can access this from, from my retro collection. There's also a new way to do this on the Amiga. So let's hop into the other room and jump onto the Amiga 1200 for this next demo.
Now, this new client, Amiga GPT, was released just two weeks ago at the time of recording this video by Sacred Banana. Now, I've been playing around with this for a couple of weeks, and there are a few things that may limit the potential audience of this. Now, the first one is it requires the latest Amiga OS 3.2.2, which is a new version of the classic Amiga operating system that was released in 2021. Now, I've got to say, if you haven't got it, it is well worth the upgrade if you're running serious applications on your Amiga. Admittedly, it is pointless if all you want to do is play games, but if you use Workbench, it has got some really nice updates, including APIs, which make programs like this easier to develop. Now, I've seen some people on the forums complaining that Amiga GPT requires 3.2.2 to work, but on the flip side, why bother making new versions of the operating system if no software is going to take advantage of the new features? So I've got no problem with that. And you will need an OpenAI account with an active API key. Now you have to pay for this, so that means it does cost you per session. Admittedly, not very much. I've been playing around with Amiga GPT for a couple of weeks now, and it's cost me a couple of pence. But just be aware, that the API access that it needs is not generally free. Now, I did read that you can create a new trial account and OpenAI will give you $5 worth of credit, but I've had my OpenAI account for about six months now, so I guess that I didn't qualify for that. And of course, your Amiga will need to be online, obviously. So let's give this a try on my Amiga 1200. Now, this is a proper ChatGPT program, so we can launch it from Workbench. It will ask me which screen mode we want to run it on, either on Workbench or its own screen. And here we can see the user interface. And I've got to say the layout, while basic, is really intuitive. Now from the menu, you can pick which version of ChatGPT you want to use. And then we type in the box here, the query that we want to send to ChatGPT. So we can ask it to tell me about the Amiga 1200. and it will bring that down from the server. And unlike the Commodore 64 client that we tried before, it won't stop when the text reaches the end of the screen. But of course, being a graphical user interface, when it finishes, we can just position the mouse cursor over the scroll bar and scroll back through the history. And we can ask it an opinion. Why would people still use an Amiga today? And it gives me some very valid reasons. And one really cool thing about this is that you can use the Amiga speech synthesis capabilities. Now, even though this isn't included with Amiga OS 3.2, you can copy the required files from an older version of Workbench, and it details you how to do this in the documentation. And then you can basically recreate the War Games experience with your Amiga. So this has been an interesting experiment, mashing up state-of-the-art AI tools with 30 and 40-year-old computers. Now really, these machines are just acting as terminals, and the computing, of course, is being done on the other end. But the fact that people are making these ways of accessing these services for our retro machines, I think is very cool. And there could be valid use cases on the way. Now, I've heard of people developing text adventures using AI, and that would be amazing to play. Imagine a real living, breathing world that adapts to you in real time, that you could play via a BBS on your Commodore 64, or when the technology improves and it can spit out real working code regularly, if you wanted a, a podcast app for your Amiga, it could make one for you. Or you want a new platform game based around a squirrel for your Commodore 64, this could get to the stage where it could basically code the entire game and the graphics for you. So lots of potential here, and if you want to try them out for yourself, I will link up everything I've used in the video description. So thanks for checking out this video. Just a quick heads up, if you enjoy my content here on YouTube, I also do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast with new episodes available every Friday. Just search for the Retro Hour podcast in your favorite podcast app or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, or you can head to our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, here are another couple of my videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.